Hi, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a modular shader in Blender. Be sure to stick around until the end. To start, you can use any version of Blender to create this shader. Press Z and choose Render. I'm using Eevee for this video, but you can use Cycles if you prefer. I also have a tutorial on creating realistic scenes with Eevee, which you can watch here. Let's open a shader editor window. I already have a skin material prepared, which I created in the tutorial here. It comes with all the textures and a few basic nodes. Here is the base color texture I'm using, as well as the other textures. And here is the texture I use for the infected skin. I actually have a complete set of textures for the infected version, which includes normal, roughness, and so on. Next, I'll group this shader so I can easily reuse it later. I didn't need to include the textures in the shader group, just the shader and calculation nodes will be sufficient. Select the area you want and then press Ctrl G to group the nodes. You now have a group named group input, with several nodes configured as inputs. Press N and then navigate to the group section. In this section you can view all the inputs and modify their types and names. The names are incorrect because Blender automatically assigned them based on their connections. Let's manually rename them. For example, the first input is the normal map texture. The second is for roughness. And then the specular. The last input is connected to subsurface scattering. I rename it to scattering. Everything is now configured correctly. Press tab to exit the group view. You can use tab to switch between inside and outside the group. Next, rename the group to something like skin shader as an example. The name outside the group has now been updated as well. Press Shift A and search for the shader or group you created. Select the skin shader from the list. This is the group we created, complete with the custom inputs. Next, drag in the infected textures and connect them to all the inputs. I need to drag the first tile. I have provided a detailed explanation of multiple tiles and the UDEM system in the tutorial here. Set the color space to sRGB, then switch from single to UDEM to automatically import all the texture tiles. Finally, connect the texture to the base color input. The next texture I need to import is the normal map. Change the color space to non-color and set the texture type to UDEM. Keep in mind that if you have just one texture, using a single image will be sufficient. The next is roughness. Make sure to set this texture to non-color as well. The next is specular. If you don't have any of these textures, leave it as is. There's no need to modify the shader. And the final texture is scattering, which many people don't use. Set everything to non-color except for the base color. Next, hold down Ctrl and Shift and left click on the node to view the preview. Here's the infected texture that I created. 
Now let's revert to the default skin for the time being. Now I need to mix these two shaders together. Press Shift A and look for the mix shader. This node requires two shader inputs, which we can assign our custom shaders to. Because the output of the custom group is a principal shader. Next, connect both shaders to the inputs of the mix node. You can see that both shaders are applied simultaneously, with the effect determined by the effect value. A value near 1 will emphasize the second shader, while a value near 0 will emphasize the first shader. However, I need an additional element to create a noisy texture effect. Press Shift A and look for the noise texture. Hold down Ctrl Shift and left click on the Noise Texture node to view its preview. You can now easily adjust the noise. I need to increase the strength of the noise. To adjust the noise effect, I'll add a contrast node. You can adjust the intensity of the noise by modifying the bright. Increase the contrast to create more pronounced black spots. As you can see, adjusting the bright value allows for easy control. Connect the color output to the effect input of the mix shader. Let's slightly increase the contrast. Next, adjust the bright. You can disable it entirely if needed. That's good. To achieve the desired effects, we can incorporate additional nodes and perform various calculations. Additionally, we can add inputs for other parameters, like roughness, intensity, and so forth. For example, let's connect this to an empty pin on the group node. Blender will automatically label it as a value. We can change the type of this input here. To rename it, double-click on the input field. Now there's a new pin that allows me to specify different values for roughness. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.